in September 2020, while we were stationed in Alaska, Holly and I went to Barrow, Alaska. Barrow, of course, the northernmost point of the United States, right up there by the Arctic Ocean. Uh, but to get there from Fairbanks, because there's no overland route, you had to fly to Anchorage. And then from Anchorage, of course, it's just on Alaska Air. From Anchorage, we flew to Barrow. But it gave us a lot of beautiful views. We flew over Denali National Park. I think we may have seen Mount Denali. Uh, it's hard to tell from the air. But beautiful views there. We finally get to Barrow. And by the way, um, things are transported as well as people. So we get to Barrow. We did. We traveled very lightly. You'll see our backpacks. That's all we brought. Planning on being able to walk everywhere we went. Uh, the whole route, everything we wanted to see, just about 5.8 miles there. Uh, but there in Barrow, uh, there's not a lot of tourist sites, but there are a few. Here's a memorial to, I think it's Wiley Post and Will Rogers. They had visited there, and uh, their plane went down, uh, crashed not far from Barrow, and both of them died. There's a memorial there uh, remembering them. And there's a sign. We just started walking. There's a sign that showed distances to a lot of different towns. Uh, but very, I don't want to say primitive, but not really developed. A lot of the, uh, there, there aren't paved roads, uh, but there are uh, obviously buildings there, the regular services, there's churches, uh, that last picture was a courthouse, uh, a lot of neat buildings there, but they get a lot, they get wore out, it seems like right there on the ocean and with the cold and the wind and everything else. There's a borough uh, offices, and then right in front of that, there's a, um, the jaw, of a uh, bow whale. Some of the scenes just old deteriorating boats there along the, the water, along the road, which is right by the water. This is a famous place there, these two uh, whale tusks, not tusks, but uh, jaw bones, I think they are, that are mounted there. Everybody gets their pictures taken there. You see them, you look up barrel, you find people. So we had to do that, of course. So right below that, just a beautiful view the bay there, and then close to the Arctic Ocean. And of course, being right there, first time to the Arctic Ocean, we had to touch it. Uh, it was very cold though. In September it was cold. We of course wouldn't go in it, but had to touch the Arctic Ocean there. Uh, so we both had our chance to do that. You see our backpacks, that's all we carried, all we took. We were just there for one night. Uh, but continuing on the uh, some of the old buildings, now, this is supposed to be a really, really good museum of the area and the history. And another uh, bow whale skeleton there. But it was closed. Here's our, our B&B that we stayed at. Uh, Latitude 71 B&B. It, it was really nice. Um, it was about the only place we could stay there. There's a big hotel, but we weren't able to stay at that hotel. I think it was closed. There wasn't much open. And, and in fact, for several... For quite a while, I, was, I, I had been checking because we wanted to go, checking to see when things were opening up, when we would be able to go. And we finally, uh, a friend of mine went uh, from Fort Wainwright, and I saw his pictures. I thought, how'd you do that? So we just did the same thing he did, so we were able to go. So almost as soon as we got to the B&B, &B, um, some people, some other guests there, were heading out to the old airfield because they said they had caught a whale, so wanted to see it. So we... I hitched a ride with them, or they offered to let us ride with them. When we got up there to the old airfield, there were three whales, three bowhead whales that had been caught. And we were able to uh, see them uh, slaughter those whales. Now this is a community event. Uh, many from the community come out because the whalers uh, and their, their workers couldn't do it themselves. But even kids you see out there doing that. But the whalers themselves couldn't do it. They offered us some. Uh, there's a piece of it. Here's Holly giving it a try. Okay, Holly's going to try a piece of the... Yeah. Just stop right mm. now. We're on the clock. Was it good? good. And bread, that's uh, Alaskan bread. It's very good. A greasy. Yeah. Is it greasy? It's good. Though. Um, she ate more than I did. I ate just a little bite to say I did it. She ate a whole bunch. But they gave us a piece and the, even a piece of bread. And you could see over there uh, where they were cooking it by the uh, whaler's boat. But they just, uh, again, the community comes out because it takes a lot of people. 
I'm just going to let some of this video run because this is amazing. And these, this way, I think, was 41 feet long. Um, this woman there in the white, an older woman, uh, she came over and talked to us and told us about what they were doing, how the community comes out. These pieces here in front, she said these were going to be reserved for the community Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners. But she said that everybody that comes out and helps, they get a portion of it. Uh, the best section, of course, of the whale, the whaler and his crew uh, gets gets that, but everyone who comes out and helps gets some of it. So that was pretty neat. So we headed back, and uh, people went back later. Now oh, there's an old uh, hangar from the old airfield, uh, but just beautiful views on there. We went back out and, and just saw the ocean again in the evening because it was just so beautiful. And we walked out there at night and walked back to our room. I might mention, as uh, as we go through the night here, um, we stayed uh, at the Airbnb. We were able to eat there. A very good dinner. They're kind of expensive, but it was nice because we didn't have to go out. We got to visit with the, with the other guests. Um, and we were able to talk to them about things to do. The next morning, uh, we called a cab because you just kind of make a contract with them. And, and we wanted them to take us as far out as we could go. Because you can't go to the very tip of the north, the northernmost point, because that's own that's Indian property or the school property or something. You can get there, but he took us as far as he would take us, and I think this is just about a mile and a half from the very tip, the very northernmost tip. But while we were there, though, we didn't see polar bear, but we saw polar bear fur, and uh, Holly picked that up, and she wound up uh, spinning that, cleaning it, spinning it, and making some stuff out of it. But here we are on the way back. Then just some of the. Uh, the more remote housing, um, whale bones all over the place. It's, it's really interesting, uh, but very, uh, very depressed for the most part. Very depressed area because there's not a lot of industry and not a lot to do there, and everything's so expensive. Uh, but once we got back, well, here's still on our way back. They're along the coast. Beautiful, once again, beautiful. Uh, we stopped on the way back though, where they had done the whaling, where they had butchered the whales. And uh, you can see the remnants of it. I mean, they took everything pretty much that was good. Though there were some people getting scraps out there that morning. But there's not much left by the time they're done with it. And they get it all cleaned up. And, and I guess, I'm not sure what they do with it all. Kind of push it there out of the way. Uh, but they it's a whole big process. But that's a lot of meat. <laughs> a lot of uh, whale. And even that's left over there. So they get that all cleaned up and move out of the way. We watch that a little bit. And we were on the way back. We got too much of that here, but we'll leave that in. But uh, just some cleaning up, pushing it out of the way, and then we continued on back here after that. Uh, this uh, there was a ship that was docked there that was unloading. This bridge is called the Top of the World Bridge. I'm not sure if there's much significance to it or not. It was kind of neat. It's right by where we were, where we were going. So we uh, went back to the B&B, &B, got our stuff, started walking again. Walked along the beach this time. It was just so beautiful. And how often are you going to get up to the Arctic Ocean, to the northernmost point? And so we walked along the beach. We saw the sights. We took pictures, of course. It was kind of cold that morning, as I recall. Uh, but just walking along there from the other side, seeing things from the other side. There weren't many places open. I think there was one restaurant open, maybe two. This is when we stopped at a little bakery, but then they also had I think it was Mexican food, and we got some food, and we went to um, find a place to sit and ate it. We continued to walk through the town, but you can see the, uh, the buildings and how they get so wore down uh, from the weather. But here was a neat thing we saw. You can pronounce that. I'm not going to try, but an ancient village was here, they say, uh, from about 2,000 years ago. This was inhabited, and there were homes there. It had been excavated. Of course, there's not much to see now. It was neat to see that there was um, habit inhabitants there a long time ago, uh, living in that environment. But just another view, this is the other side of town, the other view of the water there. But then we, we walked back around. We did stop at a gift shop. There wasn't much to it. We got what we could, and a little bit of stuff. We headed back to the airport. Headed back to Anchorage and then to Fairbanks and just uh, really, really enjoyed the time. It was a great trip, a once in a lifetime.